the Oscars happening this weekend, all eyes will be on Hollywood. Now, while controversy has surrounded the diversity or lack thereof in Tinseltown, the excitement surrounding the stellar work and growing opportunities for women in film should not and cannot be discounted. Joining us now from the University of New Mexico Women's Studies program is Dr. Andrea Mays. Uh, doctor, thanks for being with us this morning. This is a really interesting conversation, and it can be much larger. I mean, obviously, diversity surrounding the Oscars has been a major talking point since they announced the nominees. Before we get to that, though, what are the current state of affairs, in your opinion, in Hollywood for women working in film? I think that the issues that are being dealt with in this year's uh, top categories for women are also the issues that women are facing in Hollywood and in general. Mm -hmm. If we think about Jennifer Lawrence's role in Joy, mm -hmm. we think about women in business and underrepresentation in CEO roles. Mm -hmm. If we think about uh, Brie Larson's amazing performance in Room, we think about issues of safety and violence against women. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's also Jennifer Jason Lee's role mm -hmm. in The Hateful Eight, where she is the only woman in the film and a tremendous amount of violence is being visited upon her. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's, there are several layers uh, to this year's nominees, and those are layers that reflect societal trends mm -hmm. as well as challenges that women as actors are facing in Hollywood. Right, yeah, life imitating art in many ways, unfortunately. So uh, let's talk, just bring it here a little closer to home for a minute. Uh, a lot of female actors that work here in New Mexico in the film industry, um, they will say that they are underrepresented, that they will say that for every, you know, for every female role that is mm -hmm. casting here in New Mexico, there are 15 male roles. Huge, you know, discrepancy in those numbers. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's true, first of all? And if so, why? I think that New Mexico is a small, it's a microcosm of the larger national film industry. Mm -hmm. And I think that the film industry in many ways reflects our, again, societal trends and the disparities that are visited upon women, definitely people of color, uh, differently gendered and, and um, uh, sex folks in society. So I think that, of course, we're going to see these kinds of disparities. New Mexico, in and of itself, is a, is a location with a small population, right. despite its landmass. Mm -hmm. And our movie industry, though growing, is not huge, mm -hmm. right? So if 70% of the roles in most cases are, are roles written for, by, and about men uh, nationally, then in New Mexico the numbers get smaller mm -hmm. when we think about our population. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. So what would you say in your opinion, you, you said before we started talking uh, on air that it's important that we're having this dialogue, but obviously discussion is one thing, but we're t we want action, right? right. We want to see things change. What do you think needs to happen in Hollywood, in New Mexico, in Louisiana, Georgia, wherever film hubs exist in the United States to change this and to bring more diversity to, to film? We're talking about what needs to happen as a, a serious look at making changes for the industry in general. Mm -hmm. And those are deep systemic changes that need to be made. Mm -hmm. Right before I, I joined you on set, I was listening to Spike Lee talk mm -hmm. about this issue because he was talking about it this morning. And one of the points that he make, made, or the mantra that he kept repeating was, we're not in the rooms that are making the decisions about green lighting films. Mm -hmm. We're not in the rooms, and he was speaking specifically about African Americans. There have been some changes in these issues for women. Kate Blanchett, for example, produced, or her, her, she and her hum husband's company, help produce Carol, mm -hmm. but largely um, women are still, and people of color are still underrepresented in the academy. Yeah. And the academy is the location of connections, mm -hmm. and, the, and it's the uh, zeitgeist, if you will, mm -hmm. that makes these decisions about what we're going to see in our movie theaters. Yeah, absolutely. So before we run out of time, Andrea, of course, I've got to ask you uh, predictions on some of the biggest, uh, the biggest categories. First of all, best actress, who do you think is going to take it? Best actress, you know, uh, the sentimental favorite that I haven't actually heard anybody call that is Charlotte Rampling, hmm. who has recently returned to screen, right. uh, to the big screen. Uh, but the overall favorite is Brie, Lar Brie Larson, mm -hmm. and I think that it would be very just for her to win. Yeah. I don't think, however, we can ignore the performance delivered by Kate Blanchett yeah. again. I mean, her career is phenomenal, and she always delivers a transformed mm -hmm. Performance. Yeah, you never see the same. You never Kate see Blanchett the same twice. person. No, you don't. Um, 
best actor do you think is going to take it? I think that the sentimental favorite mm -hmm. um, would be Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm -hmm. I think if the Academy dug a little deeper, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that Mark Ruffalo should get it. Spotlight. I think he's showing us something different in Spotlight. Mm -hmm. I think that he's shown up consistently and delivered some very solid performances. Mm -hmm. And I think he's as much a big screen, big film actor mm -hmm. as an independent actor. Yeah. And I think Spotlight in general, uh, speaking of controversy, mm -hmm. needs to be recognized yeah. for reporting one of the biggest national, international controversies right. in recent history. Right. So. And then last, uh, of course, the big one, the big, uh, big award of the night, Best Picture, who has it? I think Spotlight has it. Really? I do. Okay. I don't, I mean, I appreciate um, the other films mm -hmm. in, in the Best Picture category, but I think in terms of the importance of the story, the Academy would do well to recognize yeah. it. Okay, yes. very interesting. Yeah, of course, it won the SAG Awards, I think, for Best Ensemble Cast, mm -hmm. or Best uh, Acting for a, a Company. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Of course, Sunday night, all will be revealed. Interesting conversation, Andrew. I'd love to continue it more on the show. For a full recap on this, guys, head over to casa.com. Thanks for your time this morning. Thank you for inviting Appreciate me. It. Absolutely.